is going on guys wise here and i'm coming to you with a very special uh one hive labs episode uh i've been thinking about doing this for a while and i just kind of came to the conclusion that i don't think i'd be able to do it regularly enough to necessarily make like a series out of it um but uh i'll just explain what i'm thinking like the reason this came up a while back was you know i build new bases quite frequently and i know everyone loves um loves the base building content that Canada and i do and um, one thing I was thinking of is those moments where I have a pretty good base, but it's eventually time to move on and I, I delete it. And I was trying to think how I could do an episode where the, before I delete my base or, or edit over it, make a new one. Um, I kind of show the base to you guys and show you how it did and talk to you, maybe show a few of the hits on it or, um, just say, you know, what I was thinking while I was building it, why I put things in certain spots, um, sort of giving you guys a base that has been successful for me that I'm retiring and, you know, call it like this old, I don't know if you guys ever seen the, the Bob Vila, this old house episode, uh, like <laughs> a house building episode. So I was thinking calling it this old base, um, but again, I just wasn't sure how often I'd be able to do them. But anyhow, it's that time. So I thought, you know, I got the afternoon to myself here. I'm going to put this together for you and just show you what I'm talking about. So uh, moving on, this um, this war against Dark Avengers, I just did the recap. 84-83 victory for 2.0 it was a really, really good war. Uh, both sides uh, forced some bullies, my base being one of them. Um, this base, this war, held three town all nine attacks and then forced a bully. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've used it. I want to say now, um, I, I do a pretty good job of, of keeping an eye to see if it's been revealed or not on a, on a YouTube video. Um, it had not. It had not. It, it, I don't believe it has been fresh at triple. And I think I've used it through about four or even five arranged wars now. Um, now, a couple wars, I know it, it's been threed on the second hit. I'm pretty sure it has never been th hit, and a couple times it's forced three or more hits, one being a bully this war. So um, I just wanted to go through, let's go first and check out the scout view. So this is the base. Um, I'm just going to kind of start from the beginning, like Kadok and I do when uh, we're doing a base breakdown. Now, um, I started with my queen chamber, obviously. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to talk about the things that I'm speaking of or to show you the things that I'm speaking of. So the queen chamber, right? Um, I, I'm a big fan now of not trying to not spend a lot of wall investment because if they want your queen, they're going to get it. So um, I love this little trick I, I use sometimes on my queen chamber just to force a weird tip. Um, you can't wall break that very easily without ensuring that, that builder's hut goes down. Um, it's very, very tricky funnel. On this side, I wanted to have the double layer all the way outside, um, sort of in like the you'll see the way I kind of put my buildings on the outside. I try and force it so that if you don't funnel every building, they're going to walk. And uh, I think about entries like that. I specifically put uh, this over here because if you come in from if, if even if you drop a golem, Sorry, let me get off that. If you drop a golem from six o'clock or even because this archer tower is tucked in, if you drop a golem over here, it might seem like it's far enough away and there is that arch tower there. Um, but I've seen it where the way this base goes, if you drop a golem, one more time, sorry. If you drop a golem right here, it's going to go to this archer tower and I shit you not, go to walk around to this archer tower. Because it's so tucked in, it's actually not that far, especially, I mean, if you drop the golem, I believe, on the outside of this archer tower, you'd be safe. But if you drop it on the inside, it walks over to this archer tower. And then what happens when this archer tower dies? Oh, it's going to walk over to this mortar. And you don't see that Tesla there, and you think this stuff's pretty far away. So all of a sudden, that Tesla pops. And now your golem's walking all the way around the base, past the Tesla farm. It's going to die out there, and you're not going to get any tanking for that queen chamber. So that was kind of the idea with my funneling, with my queen chamber. Uh, wanted to make it very tricky to get in there. And kind of usually I have, you know, I'll have two, uh, either an expo or a couple cannons, and then always two arch towers uh, helping the queen chamber out. So that moves me on to sort of the rest of the base. Uh, I just kind of built it. I wanted it to be sort of as tricky as possible. A lot of compartments um, I find right now just to sort of help slow Valks down, to slow any sort of HDHB action down. Um, I wanted to have a lot of small compartments. Now, kind of the downside of that thought process is a lot of times you'll leave yourself open to... Um, uh, Bolalo attacks and I really feel that this base is probably the weakest against that and uh, the entry I saw um, 
actually it was what did the guy do i think he um i think it was z bear in a friendly challenge i saw it uh he dropped two golems right on this archer tower and because that tesla's there they they move in and get sucked into this little and then you don't have to these mortars don't do anything to them on the outside especially if you just drop a jump spell there and if you drop a jump spell there you don't get access to the queen i guess you can bring two jumps but you, i just saw a big push into the base um i don't know if he wall broke there like waited till this wizard tower went down drop some wall breakers maybe here and they got tucked in like if this cannon was dead and this wizard tower was dead you could drop wall breakers up near this uh, dark spell uh, factory and they're going to go blow this wall open and then one jump spell from here because they're going to go right in one jump spell gets you access to that queen so i think that's maybe what the thing was and on, on the same token you're getting access to almost all the air defense too so that's what i'd say the biggest weakness is to this base i think it's very strong um overall though like other than that entry i think it's a very strong base versus air by exposed the the, the air defense that are targetable um from a queen walk i find are very protected uh very difficult to get to even though um you could technically walk that stuff uh so you know i tried to get a good spread on my air d i wanted to make it uh yeah if you don't like you could walk from from down from three o'clock get that air defense in the process because you tuck right in there but you take it a lot of heat and it take you a really long time to get down to that queen so just wanted to make it as tricky as I possibly could. Uh, DGBs, uh, sort of an obvious uh, spot for it. There's really not many spots for DGBs here, but it's still a big area to address because um, it's very away from the queen. You do have to have that entry I spoke of to get the DGB and the queen. Uh, but that, again, like I said, that entry, I believe, is the biggest flaw in this base. Uh, this bomb over by the expo here, I've seen single-handedly uh, stop a town online attack. Actually, it might be one of the ones in this war. I guess we're going to find out. Uh, you'll see hogs come in from, from sort of the 10 o'clock, jump in, get smoked by this bomb in front of that expo, and this wizard tower is standing there and just mops them up with the with the Teslas there. So this is a very deadly 9 o'clock. Um, but yeah, overall, I really like the base. Um, did have, uh, now that... I did make some adjustments because of the Lalo aspect. Um, why did I put the small bombs there? I did put uh, I did put those small bombs there and that skeleton trap on air on purpose. I did kick these bombs to the outside just to surprise. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know how to defend against everything at once right now. Um, I did that just recently. Um, that is not necessarily recommended at this point. Um, I'm still a fan because of the strength of the bow lalos um putting them against key air defense or at least making sure one of your air defense is very well protected because um yeah it's it, again no it's tricky the, the whole town hall um nine base building is insanely tough so anyhow there it is guys that's my base um you know i I can't really uh, say much more other than I started with my queen chamber. I built very windy compartments. I adjusted some walls to uh, be satisfied with the compartments. I wanted to be satisfied with my air defense placements, my bomb placements, have them as spread out as I possibly could, um, You know, make the funneling as tricky as possible. Even something like this with the four army camps, those buildings go down very quickly, but kind of hard to judge exactly the direction units will go from that point um this this i did leave fairly weak uh at 12 o'clock but it's because i like even if you broke this tip and jumped jumped here you're not getting crazy value you're not going to know exactly even where your troops are going to go i don't know just uh just some thoughts um kind of tricky spring traps in there too but is what it is let's go ahead and check out some of the attacks on this base so war events go right down to the bottom there we go. There's one of them. There it is. Right. Right. All right. So first attack, 90% from their number 19. I think he brings a stone goho. Yep. Stone gohobo. <laughs> Whatever. So he's dropping this baby drag. Uh, that was one little weakness I recognized as soon as I saw this attack. Dropping this baby drag, he gets really good value out of that baby drag there. There's nothing really to, to hurt it. It's going to get the wizard tower all by itself, I believe. I don't think it's in air defense rage when it starts attacking the wizard tower. Is it? Nope. So it gets basically a wizard tower and like four other buildings with the baby drag. That's really good value out of that. Goes ahead and creates funnel on the other side. Now, uh, he didn't address this mortar. 
And I believe that kind of screws them up here in a second. Because see the golems? It doesn't screw the golems up. But I believe when he drops his king, it might pose a problem. Oh, no, there it is. He has a third golem that he hadn't, hadn't dropped yet. So the king didn't walk. He, he basically wasted having this golem. But the wall breakers are exactly the entry I just talked about. Um, except I would have brought air on the back end, possibly, um, and not this golem. If he had just done what he had just did, said screw the other golem, brought one uh, lava hound and 14 balloons, I think he would have been way, way, way better off. Because you're going to see second air defense is down. Uh, everything's going to lock onto this defensive queen here. And she is going to go down. Down she goes, right? Uh, Hound is burst, right? A few few pups to mop up other than that. But the queen is about to step up and get another air defense. Or sorry, the bowlers are. So really there's only one air defense. And it's very exposed. If he had just dropped, uh, you know, a hound sort of from six and followed him with balloons from the backside of this, this um, air sweeper, with a rage or a couple haste there, it would have been GG for this base. Absolutely. Uh, that golem was really, uh, really the downfall of that. And uh, thanks to that little mortar on the outside. But the, like I, but like I had mentioned, and when I was showing you the base, if you drop the golems first, because of these defenses here, if you just dropped all three golems right away, they all would have went in, but because he delayed the other golem, it walked around and was completely useless to him. And uh, yeah, didn't quite come away with the tree. All right, more events. So that was um, this guy. Uh, so next hit, 94%. Same idea, uh, bringing this stone go hobo, stone boho, stone boho, that it sounds better. Um, same baby drag, you're going to see the very similar attack here. I believe he drops a golem up here first, though, to try and take care of it. No, no, he drops these two. Or I think he just like accepts that this mortar's there and drops the third golem and drops some troops, actually, with uh, with the golem uh, to at least give it a little more benefit. Up to this point, the attack is the exact same. So you accept that gold star didn't go down. So, oh, he drops his queen over there. I just, I didn't like that adjustment at all. Um... I would have went, tried to go with, uh, copy what the last guy did, except just deal with that mortar somehow and make sure everything goes into that core. So you're going to see he gets like less of a push into the core, still gets the same amount of air defenses though. And that was the other thing that baffled me about uh, DA here was not recognizing the value they're getting out of that kill squad. Instead of bringing hogs on the back end, I think air would have been a much, much, much more viable back end just because of that exposed air defense. The last attack, not this one, but the last one, he did get that defensive queen. Um, you know, I literally feel if that last attack we just watched uh, just brought a lava hound instead of the third golem and 14 balloons or even 12 balloons, he would have had the three star there. But just not enough juice for uh, J E H Gear 69. Sorry, buddy. Not a quite. So one more town hall nine. This guy had some struggles. Um, I don't even think I watched this one. Same idea though here. Stone, stone boho. Um, I believe he even drops. He goes in from the same angle. Maybe I did see this one. Yeah. Oh, I should, should have pointed out in that last one, the hogs getting roasted by that bomber. Maybe it's this one. So same baby drag down, same entry, same everything. Go ahead and fast forward that. But you're going to see what I'm talking about with this mortar. He just doesn't, none of these guys address the mortar over there. And guess what? <laughs> King is walking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, King is walking. So he goes and and they just, I just don't understand. I don't understand why why you just accept that that mortar is there and just try and adjust your entry. If you just done, so, if you just even drop the goal in there first and a couple wizards and let it take care of and then gone in with everything else, I don't know. It just seems strange to me. So you're gonna see uh, P for Payum does not get the same push that the other guys did. Both heroes are now um, taking damage up there. Uh, pups end up going over there, start working on that king. Golem standing there doing a little tanking. He ends up getting air defense number three here. Still, 
but they still decide to bring Hogs for the back end. I just don't fully understand it. <laughs> Three air defense are now down. And this golem again was pretty much a waste. Um, I just, something to think about for cleanup episodes or cleanups guys is what was the value ever of this golem? I know, I know you guys were so focused on this mortar and getting rid of it, but it just, just seems so strange, so strange about um, the adjustments that, that were, uh, that were made for this attack and just wasn't quite enough. Queen stands are on a wall. Golem's just getting beat up by that expo. Not going to be enough. Queen pops the ability, doesn't even let the hogs do their thing. Not happy about that attack, clearly. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. Number six comes in and uh, and saves the day for you guys. Uh, one thing I want to mention, if you're doing bully attacks, 10 versus 9, please don't be stupid. Don't try to lalo it like, like back in the old days. That's how you bullied 9s. Bring miners. They are invincible to Town Hall 9s. Like, it is so hard to screw up a minor attack, you know, just go home with the shattered entries, maybe a few bowlers in your CC, even bring a few bowlers just to help the kill squad get some push, open up a wall, jump into the core, let the kill squad do their thing and send in 20 or 25 or 29 miners and you're going to have huge success. A few heals, right? Maybe bring a rage for this kill squad. Boom, there it goes. Going to smash right into my core, take everything out in the process and in come the miners from 10 o'clock. Just going to kind of spread them out, start working them from uh, from one side of the base to the other. Boom, boom, boom. Hound bursts. Like, so, I mean, <laughs> you see how, like, this attack wasn't even, like, that pretty. Like, these golems are standing over here. He's got the heroes taking all the damage over here. He even ends up almost losing his queen. Sorry, not quite. does lose his king there, though. Uh, so, I mean, not the prettiest of attacks, but... There's nothing that can be done about it. I mean, there's a bazillion miners coming in. Uh, obviously, the queen chamber isn't going to have any sort of real bombs. You see, see, you know, who knows where the bombs are. It's clean up attack, right? This base is done for. What a chump. Wiser gets bullied. Nice job, Ty Bot. Aye. That Wiser. Such a chump. <laughs> anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, something a little different. I just had some extra time today, and uh, I was thinking about I got to build a base, and which I was thinking about which is the next base to be removed from my rotation of bases, and that's probably the one. And it's actually been one of my best bases in a long time. So uh, enjoy, take it, tweak it, have fun with it. Um, but uh, yeah, I just uh, hope you enjoyed the content, and that'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help it bag that next tree star. Till then, I'm out. <laughs>